السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على خير الخلق محمد بن عبد الله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وعلى من سار على دربهم واتبع نهجهم إلى يوم الدين إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل الله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمداً صلوات الله وسلامه عليه عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم أما بعد All praise is due to Allah We praise Him We seek His help We seek His help And we seek His forgiveness we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of ourselves and the evil of our actions. Whomever Allah guides, none can misguide. And whomever Allah Azza wa leads astray, none can guide. And I bear witness. I bear witness that there is no God or deity worthy of worship but one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and messenger. All you who believe have consciousness of Allah. Fear Allah the fee that he deserves. And only die in state of total submission to Allah and to Allah alone. And Allah has said subhanahu wa ta'ala the meaning of indeed whomever obeys Allah and his messenger will attain success. Whomever obeys Allah and his messenger will attain success. Dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. I just want you to know that you're in a gathering and amongst this beautiful gathering there are angels present and that's what Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he has said he said inna lillahi malaikatun sayyahina fil ard yatatabbauna majalis adh-dhikr Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he has said there are angels that roam around and they look for places where people are remembering Allah and that's one of the reasons that when you leave the masjid or a gathering, you feel a sense of happiness, a sense of tranquility. Your face glows by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We continue on with what we've left last night by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The reason that we have decided to talk about this important topic, my dear respected brothers and sisters, because we find that the majority of Muslims are ignorant about the jinns, about position, about witchcraft, about the evil eye. We find that unfortunately, unfortunately, the majority of Muslims seem to seek assistance of the wrong people, of people that are evil, of people that are committing shirk. They are the magicians, the fortune tellers, we all know the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which he has said, مَنْ أَتَى كَاهِنًا أَوْ عَرَّافًا فَصَدَّقَهُ بِمَا يَقُولُ فَقَدْ كَفَرَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ عَلَى مُحَمَّدٍ اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has said, whomever comes to a fortune teller and a magician and he or she believes in what this person has said, they have disbelieved on what, what descended on Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is the Qur'an, 
which is Jibreel, which is the Sunnah. This hadith shows you how dangerous it is for a person to seek an advice or help or assistance from a magician or a fortune teller. And the reason that this has become obvious and many people have been inflicted by jinns, by possessions, by witchcraft, is because they've distanced themselves away from Allah. That is the real reason. The reason that many people have been inflicted by shayateen is that people have distanced themselves away from Allah. And there's another hadith Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he has said, مَنْ أَتَى كَاهِنًا فَسَأَلَهُ يعني مُجَرَّدْ سُؤَالِ Whoever comes to a fortune teller and you just ask him a question without believing in him, 40 days your prayer is not accepted. 40 days your prayer is not accepted. 40 days and night. Your prayer is not accepted. And unfortunately, many Muslims are fools. Muslims and non-Muslims. They go to these fortune tellers, they sit with them, and unfortunately, some people believe in them, and they would say, they would say to many people that this is something that will happen to you in the future. If they were to know the unknown, if the fortune tellers or the magicians claim to know the unknown, why would they sit with you for an hour or two hours and they'll take your 50 or 100 dollars while they can know the tax lotto numbers and they can win three, four, five million dollars? Isn't that right? Isn't that right? They sit with you and they ask you for something which is little small substantial amount of money let us say and they will tell you the future if they were to know the future why wouldn't they go and bet on horses and win millions of dollars no one knows the unknown except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no one knows the unknown except for Allah and many Muslims also go to fortune tellers and magicians and these fortune tellers and magicians, they write certain things and they'll tell you to hang it on you and you'll be cured. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has said, Man tamima faqad ashraq. Whomever hangs anything and they believe that this is going to give him the cure, this, not Allah, then they've made shirk. If you hang something on you, believing that this is going to protect you, this is going to give you shifa, kiwa. Then you have committed shirk. You have committed shirk. That is why I am certain if I was to tell you, my dear respected brothers and sisters at the moment, go back to your houses and get me some of this muska, some of this husn so-called, kharza zara, this blue eye thing. All this garbage that exists in Muslim homes. To an extent that once I went to Mecca and I found this little booklet which is called Husn al Hasin. I opened it. On it, there are few chapters of the Quran. But also in it, it says if you were to carry this, if you're poor, you become rich. If you're sick, you'll be cured. If you're in prison, You'll come out of prison. If you're having difficulties in getting married, this will help you. Where's our reliance on Allah? And on the other side it says, there are four names. Tail, Qaswara, Qamzam, and Afil. Where are these names? I didn't find them in the Quran. And there are numbers. That's why the ulama, may Allah protect them all, they said no one is to carry anything on them. Because some things are okay, some of them are Quran. But for them to close the door totally, they said no, no one should be carrying anything on them. 
First of all, if it is Quran, what kind of disrespect are you showing by going to the toilet with it? And as Allah has said subhanahu wa ta'ala, لِيُنذِرَ مَنْ كَانَ حَيَّةً The Qur'an is to warn those who are alive. Many people use the Qur'an when someone dies or they hang it inside the house. That is it. The Qur'an is to read and reflect and implement. You find the majority of those people who have so, so called this good luck muska, if you were to open it up, you'll be surprised of what is in it. Numbers, signs, things that the shuyukh don't know about. Because that's one particular knowledge that no one should read about. Because you will fall into disbelief or you might say the wrong thing without knowing. So the ulama, rahmatullahi alayhim, and hafidahumullah, they have said the knowledge of magic and sorcery and all that type of stuff, a Muslim should keep away from totally. And subhanallah, many people would say, well, I went to this shaykh and, you know, he cured me. No one gives cure about Allah. See, I've just blinked my eye and that was by the will of Allah. No one gives shifa but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is something that we need to keep in mind. Yes, some of these magicians and fortune tellers, you would go to them and you had a sickness or some type of problem, and then you come out, you feel better. Yes, it does happen. Reason is that the original problem that you've had was through magic. And he might have done it himself. Allow us to talk about or describe the evil people that claim they are spiritual healers. They are magicians. They're fortune tellers. Allow us to talk about them so we can define who they are, so we can abstain from them by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. First of all, whomever claims that they can cure you, know that they are evil, regardless who they are. Inshallah, if the bead reaches their knees, it doesn't make any difference. No one gives shifa but Allah. فَإِذَا مَرِضْ فَهُوَ يَشْفِينَ Allah, Allah gives shifa, subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we've mentioned, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to put his hand on someone that is sick and he used to say, أَذْهِبْ الْبَأْسَ رَبَّ النَّاسِ وَاشْفِ أَنْتَ الشَّافِ لَا شِفَاء إِلَّا شِفَاء Our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to put his hand on someone that is sick and he used to make this dua. Dua to Allah. And he say, Oh Allah, you're the one that gives shifa. There is no cure but your cure. There is no remedy but your remedy, O oh Allah. Subhanallah al -Azim. So allow us to define these evil people that are playing with people's lives and their objective that you connect your heart with them, not Allah. First of all, and remember these things, please. They ask for your mother's surname. Every magician will ask for your mother's surname. Remember this. If anyone that you speak to and they ask you for your mother's surname, I'm talking about magicians or fortune tellers, or put a question mark over that person. Run away from that person. That's the first thing. Second thing, they ask for a substantial amount of money, something which is absurd and ridiculous. Some of these magicians are millionaires because of many fools that come to them. They will ask if a woman is by herself, they will say to her, come in and keep your husband out there. When they recite, they recite secretly. You can't hear. Like once, while I was in Melbourne, I came and I realized that there was a magician that this family have called me and that magician at the same time. And this magician was reciting secretly. 
And subhanAllah, this lady had six men holding her. And her whole body is trembling off the ground. So when I came, I realized that this magician was there. I said, I've decided I'm just about to leave. They said, no, no, don't leave. So they've told the magician to keep away. I said, first of all, this man is a magician. This man is a magician. And he made her drink something that most likely it was blood. Because the magicians will ask you to sacrifice something not for the sake of Allah. Sacrifice something for, for the sake of the jinn or the shayateen. وَالْعِيَاذُ billah. So I said, this man is a magician, because I know him. This man has said to me, I will blind you, Abu Hamza. I said to him, Inna Allah amanu wa minhum. I said to him, Allah protects those who believe. Allah protects those who believe. My dear respected brothers and sisters, Allah has said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Inna Allah yudafi'u anil amanu. Allah will protect those who believe. If you have certainty in Allah, then if there's a million shaitan on the face of the earth, they will not harm you. Wallah, I would not care. If there's a million shaitan somewhere, I would walk there, no problem at all. As long as I'm remembering Allah, as long as I'm making the dhikr in the morning and at night, I would not feed them whatsoever. But... If I was not making the dhikr, I would fee not one shaitan, I would fee half a shaitan. When a person connects with Allah, there is nothing to fear whatsoever. And I beg you, my dear respected brothers and sisters, to focus on what I am saying. Don't fear the shayateen. I'm not here to scare you. All I want you to do is take precaution. In Islam, there's something called wiqaya. Prevention is better than cure. al wiqaya khayru al Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us how the jinns have become powerful over men. وَأَنَّهُ كَانَ رِجَالٍ مِنَ الْإِنسِ يَعُوذُونَ بِرِجَالٍ مِنَ الْجِنِّ فَزَادُهُمْ رَحَقًا Allah tells us subhanahu wa ta'ala that there were men there were some men, they used to go to remote areas and they used to seek the protection of the jinn, the mankind jinn, the male of the jinns. Now the jinns used to respect men and they used to hold them at high regards. But when men started to seek protection from the male jinn, that's when they started with to have a greater impact upon mankind. That's why we say, A'udhu Billahi min shaitan rajim We seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's protection. If Allah is on your side, then who's going to have any impact upon you? Allow me to go back and to tell you about these evil men and women that are destroying many homes. They ask for your mother's surname. They ask for hair from you or clothing. They ask for you to sacrifice a certain animal for them. They have no facial feature that you see any faith in them. Some of them don't, they don't even practice Islam. How can a person become a magician? They will have to disbelieve in Allah. They will have to do acts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dislikes. Prostrate to something else besides Allah. A statue. An animal. Sacrifice to someone else besides Allah. Say words of disbelief. Say words of disbelief. Place the Qur'an in an evil place. And usually these magicians, 
these magicians have no atom weight of faith whatsoever. And their objective, as I said, is wealth and to have a certain status amongst those who are ignorant. Now, allow us to define the righteous Raqi, a person that recites the Quran. First of all, they recite the Quran loudly so you can hear. They recite certain dua that Muhammad sallallahu has mentioned. Or any other dua which there's no shirk of it. If a woman is coming by herself, they'll make sure that she has a mahram. A sister once calls me, she said, oh, I'm having problems with the jinn and this and that. I said, inshallah, the following week I will come and see you. On the way this, I said, inshallah, I'll be there in half an hour. Is there anyone there? She said, no one. I trust you, Abu Hamza. I said, I'm not worried about you, I'm worried about me. Umar radiallahu anhu has said, I fear Umar. Umar radiallahu anhu, whom Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has told us, ما سلك الشيطان فرجن إلا سلك الشيطان فرجن آخر. Whenever the shaytan takes a path, whenever Umar radiallahu anhu takes a path, the shaytan runs away and takes another path. Umar said, Umar radiallahu anhu, Umar. He said, I fear to sit with a woman by herself and she's, got, she's not good looking. I fear that I sit with her, even teaching her the Quran. I fear for myself. And that is Umar radiallahu So some of you might say, well, Abu Hamza, you know, alhamdulillah, I have a lot of faith. I can be with the woman in the room by her, you know, by ourselves. And mashallah, you know, I have a lot of faith. I would say to you, when you see a good looking woman and you're sitting with her by herself and you don't feel anything, you need to see a psychiatrist. <laughs> Is something wrong with you? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed the desire in men for women. Allah has said subhanahu wa ta'ala this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said this in Al Quran. Zuyina lil nas hubbu shahawat wa akthar shi al nisa. Allah has said subhanahu wa ta'ala, it has been beautified to mankind, the desire of women. Men desire women, and you are normal if you were to say yes. And you are abnormal if you were to say, I don't desire women. So a raqi, a genuine raqi, will make sure that her father is there, her husband, her brother. Someone is there. Because sometimes when you're reading on someone, the shaitan will have an impact and that person becomes unconscious and sometimes they rip their clothing. Sometimes they would run away from the actual room that you're in. So you need someone there all the time. A raqi, a good raqi, a genuine shaykh, insha'Allah, is the person that before he even begins, he tells you about Allah. He will tell you that Allah alone gives shifa. He will be the person that cleanses your heart from shirk and he would want you to attach your heart to Allah. You know who's the best raqi? You. Yes, my dear sister, you are the best raqi for you. أَمَّا يُجِيبُ الْمُطَّرَّ إِذَا دَحَى who would respond to, to someone that is in need? When you are in need, when you are going through a certain affliction, ask Allah. You, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through your recitation, through your determination, through your persistence, through your reliance on Allah, you are the best raqi for you. You make dua. With persistence, in Allah la yaqbal min qalbin lahin. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has said, Allah does not accept the dua of a person that is preoccupied. They make dua, you know how people make dua, ameen, ameen, and they say, but it's not from their heart. Make dua from your heart. 
Make dua from your heart. As if you can see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in front of you. Oh Allah, give me shifa. Oh Allah, give me recovery. And I love this hadith of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which he has said. Listen to this amazing hadith. Listen to our beloved Prophet, peace be upon him, who only speaks through the revelation of Allah. He said, Ud'u Allah, wa antum muqinuna bil ijabah. Allahumma rahamna bi rahmatika al wasim. He said, make dua to Allah and you have certainty that Allah is going to respond to your dua. Make dua and you're certain that Allah is going to respond to your dua. Don't make a dua just for the sake of making dua. My dear respected brothers and sisters, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Aqrab ma yakun al-abd ila rabbihi wa huwa sajid. The closest that a person can be to Allah is when they're prostrating. Say, Subhana Rabbi al-A'la three times and stay there. Don't be hasty in your prayers. The worst of thieving is thieving in the prayer. That's what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has said. The worst of thieving is someone that thieves in their prayer by not giving the prayer its right. Allah, Allah, salam alaikum, mashallah. Is that exercise? Say, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar min al-shayateen. Allahu Akbar min al-jinn. Allahu Akbar min al-dunya wa ma fiha. Allahu Akbar min amali. Allahu Akbar min shughli. Allahu Akbar min zawjati. Allahu Akbar min awladi. Allah is the greatest. Don't do not allow anything to occupy you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar. That's why we repeat it so many times. And it should be engraved in our hearts. Dua. Be sincere in your dua. As I, as I said, a genuine da'i or genuine raqi is the person does not say that I can give shifa. He will always say, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will be cured. Be because he should give that person confidence. Inshallah, you'll be cured. Don't, don't despair. Don't give up. Don't surrender. Wala ta'ajaz. Don't despair. This is something that we need to keep in mind. Can a Raqi take money? Yes, he can take money. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, once the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, or one of the Sahaba recited on a person, and they gave him a herd of cattle, he said, where's my share? Yes, some of the Raqad, they travel from one place to another, let us say. Um, they don't have a flying carpet. They fly like everyone else. Um, it's permissible to pay for the cost without, as I said, being excessive in regards to that. This is something that we need to keep in mind. What is the difference between a possessed person or a person that has been bewitched? What is the difference? The difference is a person that has been possessed is the person that He's been inflicted by a certain jinn or shayateen. He could be walking, let us say, and that person can be uh, possessed. Sometimes they harm a jinn without, a person harms a jinn throwing something or whatever, or going to a remote area without seeking protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they, they can be possessed. And the worst of possession is when a ashiq, uh, a female jinn likes a man or uh, a male jinn likes a woman. That's very, very difficult. It takes a while for that person to recover by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As for witchcraft, a person would go to a magician and he will specifically ask that magician to do a certain spell upon that person. And this is so common. A man asks for this sister for marriage. And she refuses. He gets angry. He goes to a fortune teller or a magician. And he tells him, I want you to put a spell on her so she doesn't get married again. Or if she's married, let us say, I want you to put a spell on her not to be able to engage in an intimate relationship. 
There's a man which I've met, 23 years old, very strong. When he comes to have an intimate relationship with his wife, he's not able. Alhamdulillah, we recited some Quran and Allah gave him shifa. And this has become so common. And as Allah has said subhanahu wa ta'ala in Al-Quran, they divide husband from wife. And that's the most popular witchcraft act that takes place. The most popular. Subhanallah, everything is sound between husband and wife. Suddenly, she can't stand him. She, she sees him as dark, short, ugly looking person. Yesterday, everything was fine. And vice versa. He can't stand her. He can't see the side of her. When, when he's away from her, he loves her. When he's close to her, he hates her. This is very, very common. There's many different types of magic. But as I said, the most practiced, and that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Quran, is the practice of dividing husband from wife. As Allah has said subhanahu wa ta'ala in Al-Quran, إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ الشَّيْطَانِ أَنْ يُقِعَ بَيْنَكُمْ الْعَدَاوَةُ وَالْبَغْضَاءُ Indeed, shaitan wants to cause enmity and hatred amongst you in alcohol and gambling. Not only these two things, but these are the two main things. So for that reason, there's, as I said, there are many different types of magic where a person can't consume the marriage where a person feels like they don't want to do anything, there's nothing to look forward to in this life, they just sit back, and it's like they're waiting for death. Subhanallah al The The magic also that also occurs often, a person is successful, obviously studying or in their business, and suddenly they can't be bothered studying, they forget about all their, uh, you know, let us say, their homework and everything else, they can't be bothered. They give up totally. Subhanallah al -Azim. Now, allow us to talk about some of the symptoms, quickly please. The symptoms that happens to a person while they are awake. First of all, they dislike to hear the Qur'an. Second of all, they dislike to pray. And if, even if they pray, they pray very quickly. Third of all, migraines, lower back pain. Left leg, especially left leg, they, they sense a sense of heat. It's always cramped up. Pins and needles in the tips of fingers and toes. After Asr, from Asr onwards, they start to react differently. They find difficulties in sleeping. They forget a lot. They become extremely lazy. They do things they can't recall. Subhanallah. That's when they are awake. When they're asleep, dreams. Repeated dreams of animals, dogs, snakes, someone running after them, falling from high place. Subhanallah. And they, they sense that there's a, a relationship that's happening with them, an intimate relationship from the shayateen, that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-afu al Now, my dear respected brothers and sisters, we Muslims believe that a person can be psychologically affected. Yes. And much of the symptoms that I've mentioned, the psychiatrists also say that this also relates to a psychological problem. Now there's, we find there are two parties. One party that says, everything that happens, all the symptoms that I've mentioned, it has to be related to jinn and magic. And the other party says, it's all chemical imbalance. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me the ability to read and study on both topic, and that helps immensely. Alhamdulillah, the most important thing and the most difficult thing 
is to actually differentiate between if a person is possessed by a spirit or bewitched or that person has a problem psychologically. They do have chemical imbalance. Electricity in the head. It does happen. And many cases that I've gone to read on people's Quran, it wasn't position. Now sometimes I travel from one side to the other. I would read Quran once, twice to find out if this person is possessed, is he bewitched, or is it a psychological problem? So not everything that I'm mentioning here at the moment, it relates to jinn and shayateen and things like this. Now how can we take precaution? As I said, الوقاية خير العلاج How can a person take precaution from jinns, shayateen? How can a person do that? Your relationship with Allah is the most important thing. You're putting your trust and confidence in Allah. When you leave the house, you say, Bismillah, tawakkaltu ala Allah, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. In the name of Allah, I put my trust and confidence in Allah. There is no might nor power except by the will of Allah. You pray. You pray. This will keep shaitan away from you. There are people that do magic, but it does not work. Why? Because that person is steadfast. That person is firm. See, I tell you how magic happens. A person goes to a magician. And he would say to this magician, do a spell on this person that he hates his wife. Now this magician has a contract with the, sh the shayateen. He, he will ask about this person. He would say, go and throw some water in front of his house or go and try to get a hair of him or clothing from him. Go and find out his mother's surname or whatever. Many ways of doing it. So this magician will call upon spirits and he would assign a certain spirit to enter inside this person's body. Now this spirit has a contract with that magician. And this shaitan will try his utmost best to penetrate into the body of that person. Just like hot air that comes in. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul, إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانِ يَجْرِي مِنْ إِبْنِ آدَمْ مَجْرَدَمْ Shaitan goes through the son of Adam in the, the blood vessel. Shaitan does. And he's able. Especially upon those that are weak. Especially upon those that have not armed themselves. They have not taken the appropriate weapons. The shaitan can just come in, just like hot air. As you're breathing in oxygen. The shaitan can enter inside the body. And mind you, this is consensus amongst Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And wallahi, as I've mentioned last night, as I see you in front of me, and I bear witness that I see you in front of me, I bear witness that the jinn can penetrate into the body of a human being. And I have been reading, not for 5 and 10 and 20 years, over 23 year period, I have been reading on people that have been possessed and bewitched by shayateen and jinn. Muslims and non-Muslims. I have read on people that are Muslims and non-Muslims. Allow me to tell you the story quickly. Once I was called to a masjid, also in Melbourne. And I came a bit late after Aisha. And as I drove in, I realized that there's someone sitting inside the car. A lady that was sitting inside the car. So I came straight inside the masjid, and there were people waiting for me. There was a man that was possessed at that time by six spirits. So I asked him, I said, who's that lady inside the car by herself at this time, late at night? It's rude for her, you know, it's not, it's not appropriate for us to allow this woman to be by herself. She'll be frightened. I said, please allow her to come in. She came in. I started to recite the Quran. That miracle that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has descended upon mankind. Indeed, this Quran guides to what is superior. This Quran that the majority of Muslims have left behind. 
Allah has said subhanahu wa ta'ala وَإِذَا قَرَأْتَ الْقُرْآنِ جَعَلْنَا بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَ الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْآخِرَةِ حِجَابًا مَسْتُورًا وَإِذَا قَرَأْتَ الْقُرْآنِ Allah has said subhanahu wa ta'ala if you were to recite the Qur'an we have made between you and those who disbelieve a shield no jinn, no shaitan no disbeliever will have any impact upon you so I started to recite the Qur'an and suddenly this person's body started to tremble and he started to speak Hebrew. Mind you, she was his girlfriend and he was her boyfriend. She was a Jew. And she knows Hebrew. So she was interpreting for us what he, what he was saying. But she was shocked knowing that he doesn't know a word of Hebrew. He's a Muslim brother. He's an Arab. And she's a Jew. She knows Hebrew. And she's telling us what the jinns are saying. Female jinn speaking through his mouth. Anyway, alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah alone gave him shifa. And it took about a month and a half of constant reading Quran. Sometimes it takes a day. Sometimes it takes a month. Sometimes it takes a visit before you even walk in. The shaitan is scared. He runs away. It's all by the will of Allah. Allah strikes fear in the hearts of shayateen. So sometimes they leave straight away. Once I went from Melbourne to Sydney, an hour and a half flight. As soon as I came into that house, that young man, he was only 21 years old. He fell on the ground, he started to shake, and then he got up, he was fine. The father opens up the door, I read some Quran, there's nothing wrong with him. The young man has said, Alhamdulillah, I felt like the spirit left by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the shaitan was so scared that he left the body before I even walked inside the house. That's why the will of Allah. This Jewish lady embraced Islam. And she became a Muslim. And she wore the hijab. And she married this man. Remember, they were both and girlfriend. And she was steadfast. And she was firm. And her husband didn't want that. He didn't want her to be so practicing. And subhanAllah, this happens sometimes. Like once there was a, an Australian man, he wanted to marry an Asian sister. So the parents have said, okay, you've embraced Islam. They didn't believe him. They said, go to Malaysia. Whoops, I've mentioned the country. Go to, go to Malaysia and spend six months there. Do a course. Know about Islam. Do a course about Islamic studies. And then come back and we will allow you to marry our daughter. Now here, obviously, when you're in love, as many people, when some people are in love, then they become Buddhist because she's Buddhist. Subhanallah and Ali. So he went to Malaysia, spent six months, came back, and the parents were overwhelmed. And they said to him, when do you want to get married? He said, when your daughter goes and fulfills that course. When she knows about Islam and she wears the hijab and she prays, then I'll marry her. Otherwise, I ain't marrying her. That means I'm not. <laughs> so this Jewish sister, alhamdulillah, that she embraced Islam, she was steadfast and firm. Her husband didn't want this. He divorced her. And until now, mashallah, tabarakallah, may Allah keep us and her steadfast. She's still steadfast and firm. And she is teaching other sisters Islam. You know, when this faith comes into the heart, you become a totally different person. When Iman comes into your heart, everything changes. You don't feel no jinn, no shayateen, nothing. Prevention. As I've said, prevention is better than cure. How can a person take God? First of all, as I said, to strengthen your relationship with Allah. And there's no better way to strengthen your relationship with Allah than prayer. Second of all, abstain from major sins. Keep away from major sins. Sins opens the door for the shaitan to attack you. Major sins, keep away from it. Read. Read the stories of the prophets. Read the stories of the companions. Read. Come to these gatherings. You know what Muhammad said? 
We all know the hadith. Inna dhibu ya'kulu min al-ghanam al-khasiyah. The wolf eats from the sheep, the sheep that wanders. We need to be, see this beautiful gathering? How beautiful is this? We need to make sure that we attend often. This gathering strengthens us. I can't leave this by myself. I need your help. The shaitan runs away from Islamic gatherings. Read the Quran, I beg you for the sake of Allah. You see, many of us, they have a program, a daily program. Half an hour going through the internet, one hour watching soccer on television, half an hour seeing their mother or their father, uh, you know, six, seven hours working. That's all good. There's nothing wrong with it. But also introduce into your program half an hour, one hour of reciting the Quran, the book of Allah. Allah has said, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah has said subhanahu wa ta'ala We descend what is in the Quran What is shifa? Remedy, cure To those who believe Remedy and mercy A sense of happiness and tranquility within you When you actually understand this Quran Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Iqra'u al-Quran Iqra'u al-Quran فَإِنَّهُ يَأْتِي يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ شَفِيعًا لِصَاحِبِهِ وَفِي حَدِيثًا آخر شَفِيعًا لِأَهْلِهِ Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has said, recite the Qur'an. This Qur'an, recite it. It will come the day of judgment and the Qur'an will intercede for you. The Qur'an would beg Allah to bring you into Jannah and to distant you from hell. The Qur'an. That day, everyone says, myself, myself. Nafsi, nafsi. But the Qur'an that you recited and the Qur'an that you've implemented, it will come the day of judgment and it will defend you and stand by you and support you when your mother and father would run away from you. يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ That day a person would run away from his brother, his mother, his father, his children. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Read the Qur'an. I don't want to embarrass you. But how many of you read the Quran half an hour a day? Don't raise your hand, please. I want you to ask yourself that question. Half an hour a day. Is that too much? Is that too much? Half an hour a day? This is protection by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you, if you were to actually have that part of your program, I can assure you by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the shaitan will not even consider or think of coming near you. Regardless of how many people do magic on you. When you have this Quran in your hand, and in your heart, and on your eyes, and in your ears, and on your mouth. If all the shayateen want to attack you, they will not be able to attack you. Because you have Allah on your side. Remember, Allah protects those who believe. So, al-wiqayah, prevention is better than cure. That is something that we need to keep in mind. Allow us to talk about now what would happen if someone is possessed. Or they are bewitched. Again, the Quran. The Quran. Read the Quran. On daily affair. And as I've said, you can do much better than any Raqi. There are circumstances, let's be realistic, that if the shaitan has been inside this body for a while, that person needs help. But sometimes the majority, the majority of cases, through your persistence and your determination, the shaitan by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will either leave your body or gets killed. Because subhanAllah, amazing, ya akhwan, wallah al-azim, amazing. You know, you read Quran on Muslims and non-Muslims, allow us to talk about non-Muslims. You read Quran on them, and you recite certain verses of the Quran, suddenly, this person explodes. They want to run away. They don't want to fight you. Yani physically sometimes, I've been fighting people. Like one sister I was reading on once. And sometimes I come close to them. I put a barrier between me and them. Especially when I know that they might basically take off or run away. 
and I'll put a pillow on their head. This sister, as I was reading, she turned around like this, put her hand above the pillow and grabbed my throat. I was Abu Hamza, and then I became Samir Muhtadi. That's my name. <laughs> I grabbed her, threw her on the ground. Her husband was there. Grabbed the belt, belted her for about five minutes. If someone did this to me, I'd be crying for one week without any stop. Constantly. Her husband opens the door and runs away. Now here I am here. And <laughs> Come here. Yeah. Suddenly, I said, Bismillah. What is your name? He said, my name is George. I said, what are you doing here? He said, this lady went to Egypt and the Sheikh has killed my son and I intend to take revenge. I said, leave in the name of Allah. I don't speak to the people that I usually possess because I don't believe them. Please, this is something, as for those people that there could be some Rockies here, please don't speak to the people that are possessed or bewitched. Because the majority of times they say lies. For example, you read on someone, the jinn says, oh, the one who did this magic is her mother-in-law or his mother-in-law. So he can cause what? Hatred and animosity amongst them. Once I was reading on, on a sister and he said, uh, the, the jinn said, oh, the person who did this magic is this person. This man went to the kitchen, grabbed the knife, and he, was, he wanted to go and kill that person. I said, relax, brother. Yawash, yawash. Relax. Because he was Turkish. Yawash, yawash. I said, relax. I said, that, they, they lie. That's their objective, that they cause more harm amongst the community. That's the shayateen's objective, to actually destroy the social life. So subhanAllah, and also I'd like to, to highlight something. You find that Many people, when they are not practicing, or they weren't Muslims, they, they had no problem in regards to this. Many people. But once they start to practice, subhanAllah, especially reverts. People who weren't Muslims and they've embraced Islam, we call them reverts, or converts, whatever you want to call them. Before Islam, they were fine. Once they started to practice Islam, suddenly, they go through these symptoms. Continuous migraine, stomach pain, lower back pain. They can't sleep during the night. They get angry. You know why, my dear respected brothers and sisters? Because before Islam, shaitan was happy from you. And he didn't have any impact upon you. But once you started to practice, shaitan dislikes this. And that's why he's harming you and hurting you. And it's just a matter of time. Through your consistency and your determination, the shaitan will give up and surrender. You know what the shaitan dwells upon? The shaitan dwells upon those people that are half-hearted. They're weak. Oh, I'll never be cured. Don't say that. You will be cured by the will of Allah. Shaitan hears you when you say this. Oh, I've been to so many shaykhs and this. No, don't do this, please. Wallah, you'll be cured. Just put your trust and confidence in Allah. And I love this hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi so much. He said, المؤمن القوي خير وأحب إلى الله من المضافين في كل خير. محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم said the strong believer is better and more love to Allah than the weak believer and in both is good. And listen to this amazing hadith. Allah loves those that are strong, those that don't give up physically, financially, technologically. Strong when someone says to them do something haram, they say no. Drink alcohol, no. Go to the casino, no. Strong. Allah loves them. And they are better than the weak believers. And then Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I love this hadith so much. He said, Ihlas ala ma yinfa. Concern yourself with what benefits you. Read what benefits you. How many people's their lives are just oh, based upon, oh, we're just wasting our time. Oh, you're wasting your time. You'll be asked about this time. Ihlas ala ma yinfa. And then he said, Wasta'in bimeen. Billah. Seek assistance of Allah. Seek Allah's assistance. And then he said, وَلَا تَعْجَزْ Don't give up. Don't surrender. Don't say, I can't. Don't do that. Shaitan, when he hears you say this, through your uttering or through your actions, he loves this. وَلَا تَعْجَزْ وَلَا تَعْجَزْ Don't give up. 
ولا ت... وين اصابك شيء ولا تقول لو اني لو لو اند دونت ساي اف يو نو اف سمثينج هابنز وين اصابك شيء فلا تقول لو اني فعلت كذا لكان كذا ولكن قل قدر الله ما شاء فعل محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم هي كونتينيوز اون ذس اميزنج حديث اي لاف ذس حديث سو ماك جيفز مي سترينث اند انرجي He said, when something happens, when a calamity befalls upon you, don't say, if I did this, this would have happened. Don't open the door of shaitan, and the door of shaitan is called, on top of it, if I did this, if I didn't do this, if. No ifs, no buts. Alhamdulillah. Say, Allah has said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, has preordained this, and just submit to Allah. Okay, you've been possessed, or you've been bewitched, خلاص. Don't say, oh, if I didn't drink this water, if I didn't, take precaution. Take the medication. And how many people have become sick and they've become closer to Allah through their sickness? How many people have become sick? So through their sickness, they come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I do really, really apologize. This is a, this specific topic, for me to give it its rights, we need at least, at least five lectures. But I'm very punctual, and I don't like to upset uh, the organizers here. We'll leave it at that, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.